the 12 disciples of Jesus. The 12 apostles. We are among the 12. Or the whole humanity in, is in the 12. God's choices. Strange choices. Very strange indeed. The choices of the mastermind. God is a mastermind. His choices are very strange. Sometimes weird. Bewildering and confusing. God, in his wisdom, makes the choices and they look to our minds very strange. Look at this. Look at these disciples. What kind of choice he made. Peter? An impulsive, unpredictable, cussing and ear-cutting Peter. He would be one day the Pope. The sons of thunder, John and James, hot-tempered, impatient, ambitious. And that John would one day write the fourth gospel. Of course, Judas Then there is Simon the Zealot, a devout Jew, one who follows the Mosaic law. Let's call him a devout Catholic, daily communicant Catholic, along with Matthew, a public sinner. A public sinner with a devout Catholic, the saint and the heathen together. God's amazing choices. And this is the universal project. These 12 are supposed to turn the whole world upside down, and they did it. The starting was hopeless. In between, everything went the wrong way. But the ending was fantastic. Peter made it. John made it. They all made it. The new Israel. Now, where are we in this story? Having looked at all the strange choices of God, of this mastermind God, where are we in this picture? According to Victor Frankl, the primary motivational force in every human being is the search for meaning. The purpose of this human existence. Search for meaning. What is the purpose of your life, my life? There is a purpose. Everything that exists has got a purpose. Everything. There can't be anything on this earth without a purpose. Everything has got some purpose. God would not make anything without a reason. This microphone here, it has got a purpose. And it is serving the purpose here right now. Everything. 
the chairs you sit in, everything, everything was made with a purpose for a particular reason. You and me, every human being on this earth, in the purpose and plan of God, the mastermind. Nobody has ever been born by accident. You are not accidents of time and history. You came at the right time on this earth. You came at the right time in the plan of God, in the wisdom of God, so your life is very significant. In the Bible, from the very beginning to the very end, you will find Everything, there's a continuum from one thing to the next, from that to the next, everything is a logical, there's a logical continuum, everything is follows in the plan of God beautifully, purposefully, meaningfully. You are also, I am also, we are also part of that continuum. You are an important chain, a link in the chain of God. There is a continuous, there's a continuum, and you are an, an important chain or link in that chain of God. So your place in history, the place you are in now, the vocation you are in now, what you do today, your family, your, your, everything is significant. So when you try to make sense of your life, the meaning of your life, always think this way, I am part of the wisdom and the plan of God. I would not have been here without the purpose and plan of God. And God doesn't make anything without a design and an intention. Why is it so? God has decided the end already. Like a film director there is, the end has already been fixed. Everything is being worked towards that particular end. The story is going to end only in one way, and the whole story is directed towards that particular end. The end has been already determined. So everything happening on this earth, your life and my life, everything is directed, guided towards that particular end. God is in charge, fully in charge. Everything is going the right way. So stop crying about what is happening in your life or happening in the world. Put your worries away, your sorrows away. Everything is happening in the right way at the right time. Note that you can understand everything with your little brain. You put aside that brain. That is all about trusting in God. God is the mastermind. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And everything is going the right way. I don't need to worry. To make this point a bit more clearer, may I ask this question, are you driven by a sense of vocation or driven by Ambition. Victor Frankl again says, the answer to this question will help you make your light beautiful and meaningful. Are you driven by ambition or a sense of vocation? I'll make it clear. Ambition is coming from within. You think your life is your own project. You work very hard, you achieve something in life, so everything depends on your achievement, so you think you make your own life. 
you think you will make your own life. By the way, you work hard, your family, everything is in your hands. It is your own personal project. Everything depends on you. That is driven by ambition from within. The other is a sense of vocation. You have been called into being. You have been called into being. You came to this year, not by your choice. You have been called into being. Your meaning is not from within, from outside. The one above you and beyond you, the one who is in charge, all your meaning, all your purpose, all your joy, everything comes from above, from the one who made you. God alone can make sense of your life. Again, only if you are thinking in terms of vocation, I have been called by the Lord to this life, to this vocation, to this place, to this ministry, to this life, what I do today, to my job, everything God has called me into. It is his choice. I will just follow him. What is wrong with ambition? Apparently nothing wrong. It can drive you. Ambition can drive you. But you'll always find life empty because look at some of the big celebrities in the world. Are they short of anything? Wealth, fame, and honor and praise everywhere. But are they happy? Why do they get into addictions? They have everything, but they get into addictions, drug addictions. Empty life. How can they end up empty? Having got everything, they have the appreciation and the fame and the name and, and everything. They are celebrities walking around the world on stage everywhere. But they live an empty life, meaningless life. And they commit the entire life sometimes because they find having got everything so empty. How can that be so? How can, because they are driven by something from within. They think achievement is all that they, all that matters. Fame is all that matters. Name is all that matters. Money is all that matters. They think that what they achieve is everything important. And, and in the end, disillusionment. Ambition doesn't get you anywhere. Unless you find your meaning from beyond yourself, always looking to God for meaning. You see, Viktor Frankl, the one who suffered the horrors of the Holocaust in a concentration camp, he suffered, but he realized, I can continue in this hell only if I find something beyond this. Only if you have a sense of vocation, purpose in life, you can bear the sorrows of this life. Only then. Unless you have that sense of vocation and purpose, God's purpose, whatever happens in this life, I know it is happening in the plan of God, in the purpose of God. So if it is in the purpose of God, I can cope with it. Before I close, Something to disturb your mind. God chooses priests, prophets, and prostitutes. Why a strange end into my gospel, bringing a very strange combination of the gospel today. If you know the Bible, you know what am I referring to? This morning I was reading about the prostitute. 
Check your understanding of the Bible. Where is she? In Joshua, the story of Rahab. She is in the lineage of Jesus, the Messiah. God's amazing choice. The priest, the prophet, and the prostitute. all in the plan of god the sinner and the saint in the plan of god so where are you where am i in today's gospel everybody everybody is in today's gospel we are all in the 12 the priest the prophet and the prostitute oh there's something more something more what about the ass the donkey god used to once a donkey to make a prophecy so it's one more character maybe i am that one the donkey the stupid ass making a prophecy so the the last line of my homily today is the priest the prophet the prostitute and the ass